All right, previous video got one like, so... All right, so that's done. I got teleported in a different space with a different shirt, but it's done. <laughs> when should you use organizations in Zendesk? Hey there, customer experience community. This is Dominic, welcome to another video. Today, we're going to look at when you should use organizations in Zendesk. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, my name is Dominic, I'm a customer experience enthusiast and Zendesk consultant, decade of experience, premier partner with Zendesk, over 300 logos uh, on the screen, projects that we've completed. And yeah, let's hop into it. Let's first discuss what organizations are in Zendesk. Organizations in Zendesk are a way for you to group your customers. Now, there's different ways and different use cases that you can use organizations to group your customers. You can use organizations to group users based on language they speak or by location they're in or by domain that they use. So with the domain, I feel I should unpack this a bit. So this means that you are, if you're offering support to one of your customers that is using a email address to always write to you. And let's give this example because I like it with the Coca-Cola. So let's say you're offering support to Coca-Cola and they're always reaching out to you from their work emails. Jeremy at Coca-Cola, Andrew at Coca-Cola, Stacy at Coca-Cola, etc. So Zenos would automatically recognize this domain name and put these users into the same box or into the same organization. Now, this is great because you don't have to do anything and you can just uh, see this organization be populated with the customer requests that are interesting to you. Now, what you can do with organizations you can create business rules based on the urgency that some of these requests come in. So you can say, for example, if a ticket is created and the organization is, I don't know, organization A, then assign it to the group, I don't know, the group support because they handle organization A. And then you can create another business rule to say, if a ticket is created and organization B is present, then assign it to the billing group or whichever function is interesting to organization B. Now there are a bunch of use cases and there is no set in stone way of using organizations, but you have to think about the efficiency of these. So not only makes it easy for you to group your customers together and create business rules for them, but you can also see in reports what these customers are asking for. And you can see the top performers or uh, top increases in number of tickets that are being sent to the system by a, an organization. So this can be very efficient because you can identify weak spots, you can uh, uh, you know, maybe one of your organizations is more important than the other and you need to maybe outsource more uh, help to yeah, help you take care of this organization or you can have a conversation with them about the number of requests they're sending because, I don't know, this depends on your niche, depends on uh, whatever you're offering support for. We interrupt this program to give you a word from our sponsor, which is Rokada.work. If you want to borrow somebody else's 10,000 hours of using Zendesk and having done over 300 projects from a Zendesk Premier partner, then hop on to this link, Rokada.work slash offers. Any service that you need with Zendesk, how that would look like for you as a ballpark from an expert, somebody that's been doing this for a decade. Once you hop on the website, on the offer page, we'll ask you how many agents you have and what kind of service you need, and we'll give you a ballpark and what that looks like. If that interests you, then we'll ask for more information and you'll be able to get an official offer from me. And uh, yeah, we can take the discussion from there. Now with any of our implementations, because we have so much experience, we'll be able to leverage all Zendesk functionality. You'll be able to look at the right reports. You'll be able to uh, make sure that you're using Zendesk with maximum capacity, get management off your back. You'll be able to have a productive team and you'll be able to have fast responses. You'll be able to get back to your customers faster, which increases your customer satisfaction. And you make sure that Zenas doesn't crash when you change something. So yeah, I'll see you on the other side in roca.work slash offers. And yeah, we'll take it from there. Bye. Another use case you can use organizations for is institutions. So you're offering support to multiple institutions and these institutions all can be grouped together. Now, you don't necessarily have to have that example that I gave earlier with a domain, right? So not everybody writing from that institution writes from a set domain name. But in this case, even if they write from their Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, whatever their, uh, their email that they use, then they can be grouped together nevertheless. So they can be put in the same box, but you have to do it manually. You have to check who these people are, 
cart and add them manually. So this is option number one. Option number two is you can do it automatically. So you can uh, create a CSV import in Zendesk, which is you know free to use. It covers only up to 2,000 records at a time. So you can group your customers and let's say 100 users in organization A, 100 users in organization B, 500 in organization C, etc. up to 2,000. So if it exceeds 2,000 entries, then you have to do it again for another 2,000. The third option to do it is to do it automatically via a webhook. So you can, uh, for example, identify where the customers are writing from. So let's say you have a form and you ask your customers, hey, tell me your email. And from this dropdown list, choose what institution you're part of. You know these are organizations. Not the best practice, but it is a way of doing it. So they select where they're from or what institution they're part of, location they're part of, or language they speak, or whatever fits your use case. And in the back end, you create a business rule, a trigger that assigns them to their organization based on what they chose from the dropdown. Now you can't do this directly with Zendesk's triggers. You have to create a webhook and this webhook has to look for the membership of this user based on a tag. Now this is getting a little bit too complicated. It's a little bit too programmer based. So we definitely can help you with this. But uh, yeah, this is a little bit more in depth. It's uh, documented create web webhooks and organization memberships. I'll put a link in the description to yeah, help you out. Now, a very important use case for you as a business owner to use organizations is number one for reports, which I already mentioned. And number two, because you can use ticket deflection. In organizations, you can allow users from that organization to see tickets from that organization. Now, your customers can log into the guide and go to my activity area and they can see tickets that have they have submitted and then they can see tickets from their organization. Now this is great because they can go in and see tickets from that organization and if somebody already sent a ticket asking for whatever they need help with, they can find the answer and they don't have to submit a ticket to you, which saves you agent time and it saves you money. So this is a very, very important factor. So these two, I'm going to repeat them because I think they're important. Number one, because you can see in reports how many tickets have been submitted by organizations. And number two, because ticket deflection. Customers can see tickets that have been submitted by somebody else in the organization and potentially asking the same question. They read the answer and that solves the request and you're done. Okay. If any of these sounded like they are relevant to you and uh, you would like to use them, then you need organizations. <laughs> so yeah, I hope this brought you value. Before you go, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Before there were 7% of you who were subscribed watching these videos. Now it's 10% uh, of you who are subscribed. So it's working and I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Can we get to 11%? Come on guys, please subscribe. I will definitely give you a cupcake if you do. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.